Hello, this is ARD, your counting coach, and the topic of the day is IS 37, which governs provisions, contingent liabilities, and contingent assets. It has three components, the first one of which is provision. Now, what is provision? Provision is defined by IS 37 as a liability of uncertain timing or amount. Provision is a liability whose timing is also not confirmed and amount is also not confirmed means we are not sure how much we need to pay and when by when we do we need to pay that amount so therefore it is a provision so is 37 states that provision shall be booked as a liability in statement of financial position when when three conditions are meet uh, which are the three conditions the first condition is an entity has a present obligation means we have a present obligation to pay that amount so present obligation whether legal or constructive will be discussing it later legal or constructive as a result of past event means in the past there has been some event and uh, because of that event we are now uh, incur we have now incurred a liability there is a present obligation for us to pay off certain amount so this is a present obligation for us now secondly we it there is a probable chance probable means more than 50 percent say if something uh, is likely to happen more than it is unlikely to happen that means there are more than 50 percent chance of happening and less than 50 percent chance of not happening this is a probable scenario so it is probable that outflow of resources embodying economic benefits will be required to settle the obligation means the obligation cannot be settled by only words we have to actually pay the amount to someone there is a probable chance more than 50 percent chance we need to pay off that amount and thirdly there is a reliable estimate that can be made of the obligation uh, again the, if there are two conditions we have a present obligation and we need to pay someone that money so uh, there is a more chance that there there can be a reliable estimate reliable estimate that we can estimate the amount of obligation so is 37 states that all these three conditions if are they are met so we need to recognize the provision as a liability in statement of financial position let me give you an example of a provision uh, there can be an example such as provision for warranty repairs uh, whenever we sell goods we give to warranty to our customers or guarantee means uh, we are guaranteeing them if there is any fault in the product due to worksmanship or due to manufacturing error or due to some other uh, misuse we will be returning it or repairing it whatever is possible so whenever company is selling goods uh, in a warranty agreement there are three conditions firstly there is a present obligation why whenever we sold the goods we are giving a warranty card with it and that warranty card clearly states it has an obligation on the part of uh, the organization the company selling the goods there is a present obligation result of past event the past event was the sale of those goods on credit or sorry on warranty terms then there is a more than 50 percent chance obviously if we are selling cell phones there is more than 50 percent chance that those cell phones out of for example we are selling 100 cell phone 10 to 15 cell phones will come in a warranty so there is a more than 50 percent chance that we need to repair that phones or give the replacement new phones to the customers then third we need to make a reliable estimate because if we are doing this business uh, from a long time uh, we may be aware that what will be the estimate of how much phones are uh, of uh, maybe require low repairs and some phones require major repairs some require minor repairs and some major repair so there is a reliable estimate so if all three conditions are made we'll be bo booking up provision now there are two types of obligations whether it is a legal obligation or there is a constructive obligation a legal obligation is one that arises out of a legal contract means we have uh, entered into a contract with someone and the contract term states that we need to incur uh, such liabilities so this is known as a legal obligation that is enforced by law a constructive obligation is an obligation that is constructed by the organization or the person upon himself so how it can be uh, there can be two scenarios an obligation that derive from entity actions where by established pattern of past practice 
means in the past we are doing such things that uh, confers liability upon us because in the past we have uh, already assumed the liability and therefore in the future now people are expected that will be assuming liability again published policy we have some published policy for example a warranty provision uh, giving warranty on our products is not a legal obligation law does not require us to give warranty to our products but due to published policy we have stated uh, that we are giving uh, warranty so this is the published policy sufficiently specific current statement the entity has indicated to other parties that it will accept certain responsibilities uh, for example let me give you a domestic example uh, for example uh, there is uh, your house and apartment and in that there are several washrooms attached bathrooms and one of your attached bathroom was uh, having some trouble and it was leaking so your uh, neighbor uh, you are on second floor and your neighbor is on first floor so your neighbor came to you and complained that your bathroom is leaking uh, uh, this one washroom so what you did uh, you said okay i i am completely sorry for this uh, incident and i will incur all the loss of repair of the bathroom of my bathroom as well and on uh, in your roof there is some leakage or seepage problem so i will repair it completely so what you did you repaired all of it and you does not ask a single penny from your neighbor so then again after a few months another one of your washroom started leaking so what now happened that your neighbor is now very much contented and satisfied because he knows that there is a constructive obligation on your part because in the past you have done similar things your past practice showed that you are a very good neighbor and you do not uh, uh, try to uh, disturb your neighbor and you want to keep good relationships with him or so therefore you will again incur such expenses so this is known as a constructive obligation uh, this is simple uh, similar thing as a result the entity has created a valid expectation on the part of those parties that it will discharge those responsibilities mean you have due to your past actions or due to your stated policies you have created ex expectation among others that you will now discharge your duties or fulfill your responsibilities okay so this is a constructive obligation so there are examples of some provisions that can be work provision for warranty warranty can be made whether it is legal obligation or constructive obligation if three conditions are meeting present obligation probable outflow and reliable estimate warranty can be made major repair means in near future we are to undertake some major repairs of maybe our building or plant and machinery so we need to consider making a provision right now okay self insurance uh, self insurance means uh, there is there are two things firstly we use an insurance company an external agency and we pay them premium and in the event of any loss that insurance company uh, intervenes and cover all our losses self insurance means we are making uh, we are insuring ourselves so instead of paying money to someone else for insurance premium some insurance company we need to make a separate bank account and deposit money on that account uh, in the name of premium so whenever there is a loss the total amount that has been collected from the premium will be used to uh, cover the loss okay this is known as self insurance environmental contamination means the company has been doing something uh, drilling uh, in the fields or water and there is a environmental contamination that would uh, taken place so we need to make a provision right now for future environmental losses decommissioning or abandonment cost in case if we are winding up from a project uh, the cost that will be incurred at the end of the life of the project is known as decommissioning or abandonment cost so uh, or restructuring we need to restructure the whole organization in terms of financial or in terms of other restructuring so these are the examples in which provision can be made so is 37 covers three component one is uh, provisions then there is a contingent liability so what is the contingent liability contingent liability is said to occur when out of those three conditions uh, if uh, any condition does not mean or out of these three conditions there are only two conditions being meet meted so therefore we won't be recording a provision else will be uh, disclosing it as a contingent liability contingent liability is not recorded in the accounts 
for which for um, uh, the general entry wouldn't won't be passed so what we need to do we just need to write it in our notes to the accounts notes to the accounts as you may be aware there are five financial statements income statement statement of financial position statement of change in equity statement of cash flow and the last one of which is notes to the account notes to the account contains the policies of the organization so in the policy section we'll be writing as a contingent liability that this is a liability now let's discuss these three conditions one again once again uh, previously we studied there there was a present obligation here there is not a present obligation but it is a possible obligation possible obligation is an obligation but it is not right now an obligation but it can become an obligation in the future let me uh, read the official statement of is a possible obligation that arises from past events whose existence will be confirmed only by the occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future events not wholly within the control of the entity for example for example we have, we are a super store a departmental store and we are uh, retailers and what happened that uh, some day what happened uh, there was a customer there was a uh, person uh, shopping in our uh, departmental store and the floor was wet why the floor was wet because our the cleaner the domestic wiped out the floor but the floor was still wet and he forgot to uh, place the precautionary sign you have seen in some places in the supermarkets and all this and this plazas there is a yellow uh, board that is uh, re re written here and on that board there is written there is a caution that the floor is wet you must take care of yourself so that sweeper uh, cleaned our floor uh, the floor was still wet but he forgot to place that warning sign there so what happened the customer came running and he was slipped down and his head uh, suffered severe injury and then what happened his parents the parents of the boy who slipped down uh, uh, sued the company sued our departmental store for misconduct and for this uh, uh, horrific accident that took place so this was a possible obligation so they have uh, uh, they have started a litigation a court case uh, against us but the case has not yet been finalized and the final decision the verdict of the court is still pending so it can be a possible obligation that arise or past event or which was the past event uh, that the that uh, customer fell down and broke his head or something and whose existence will be confirmed only by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future event now what is the future event future event is the uh, verdict of the judge that will be in our favor or it will be in the favor of that customer now the first condition is that for a contingent liability there is a possible obligation uh, we already discussed what is the possible obligation means uh, if the obligation is not possible maybe the obligation is a present obligation sahi so present obligation was already there in uh, uh, when recording a provision but if there is a present obligation but it is not recorded why because it is not probable means the first condition is satisfying but the second condition is not satisfying a present obligation that arises from past event but it is not recognized because because it is not probable that outflow of resources embodying economic benefits will be required to settle the obligation mean the first condition is meeting present obligation but the second condition that is probable outflow there is no more than 50% chance that we need to settle this obligation or thirdly uh, there is a present obligation there is a probable outflow but there is not a reliable estimate the amount of obligation cannot be measured with sufficient reliability so this is the rare scenario that there are first two conditions are meeting and we cannot find a reliable uh, measurement so this is somewhat rare so uh, we already discussed there are two things one is provision and one is contingent liability uh, there is a provision when all three conditions are meeting present obligation probable outflow and reliable estimate and the, it is said to be a contingent liability and is only need to be disclosed in the notes to the accounts and it should not be accounted for when there are two conditions or uh, one uh, out of the three conditions is not meeting 
so there is not a present obligation it is a possible obligation or if there is a present obligation there is not a reliable outflow or probable outflow or if there is a probable outflow as well the third last condition is not meeting that there is not a reliable estimate now let us get through this flow chart this will help understand what does a uh, provision means uh, we'll be starting here there is a starting point first of all we need to ask if there is a present obligation result of past event if there is a present obligation we move forward yes if then the second question is there is a probable outflow yes there is more than 50% chance we need to settle that obligation then the third question that we need to ask that is there a reliable estimate uh, if all these three conditions are meeting we need to book as a liability we need to provide it means we need to book it as a liability now let's start again all over again we will be starting from this present obligation yes probable outflow uh, uh, yes reliable estimate no now it is written rare there is a very rare chance that the first two conditions are meeting but we cannot uh, reliably estimate the obligation that how much amount we need to pay so but if it's this if it that's the way uh, if it is known then we will be disclose a contingent liability means it should not be recorded in the accounts we just need to disclose it in the notes to the account let us see uh, further combinations from this we'll be starting with this there is a present obligation yes there is a probable outflow no second condition is not meeting now thirdly is asking there is the uh, no see probable outflow means more than 50 percent chance if there is not more than 50 percent chance uh, he is asking us uh, is there a remote chance remote means very unlikely remote means around five to ten percent chance if there is a 5 to 10 percent chance of something happening it is known as remote uh, so if we are saying there is a remote chance no there is not a remote chance but it's not either uh, a probable chance probable means more than 50 percent and remote chance means 5 to 10 percent this means there is somehow between this is more than 10 percent chance and less than 50 percent chance so if there is a no again we'll be disclosing it as a contingent liability but if the chances are remote so we not need to do anything there is do nothing option means if there is less than uh, maybe 10% uh, chance of happening so we will be just ignoring it simply and we'll be doing nothing now let's start it again there is a present obligation no if there is not a present obligation there may be a possible obligation if there is a possible obligation yes and the chances if there are remote we need not to do anything if there if there are chances more than remote means more than 10 percent less than 50 percent mean the range is 10 to 40 percent so again there is a contingent liability so i hope under uh, students you are able to now differentiate between when do we need to book a provision and when do we need to record a contingent liability we do not need to record a contingent liability we just need to uh, write it in the notes to the account uh, now there is the last thing which is known as contingent asset contingent asset again it is the opposite of contingent liability in contingent liability i gave you an example that some customers sued us for our wrong conduct and this was a uh, for example let me give you another example Example is that we are a construction company and we are building a site, uh, for example, a multi-story building, we are constructing it and what happened that at that multi-story building, someone parked his car right uh, in the front and he may be aware that the construction of going was going on, but what happened, so some customer, uh, uh, something fell from our uh, building and the customer damaged his car or maybe he, he was also uh, hated with that uh, article and he was severely uh, disabled uh, because of this. So if the customer uh, has sued us for our wrong conduct, this, is, this may be a contingent liability or we, maybe we need to book a provision. But what happened if we have cased on someone else, we have sued someone else. For example, we have... Uh, sued some other customer or maybe we are a construction company but what we did we uh, actually outsourced the construction to someone else I mean we are not a construction company we are builders uh, we are investors and we are now suing 
in return to our uh, contractor so we are if we are suing our contractor this can be a contingent asset on us so contingent asset is a possible asset that arises from past event again whose existence will be confirmed by the occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future events not wholly within the control of the entity means we are about to get some money from somewhere so this will be a contingent asset contingent asset is an asset is an uncertain asset we are not sure how much money will be getting in reward or how much uh, or when we will be getting it so let us wrap up all of this that we have studied uh, with this uh, table this is very important uh, we will be starting with the degree of probability we have already discussed probable probable means more than 50% then virtually certain means more than 90 90 or more than 90 this means virtually certain this is bound to happen we cannot change it this is virtually certain then there is possible obligation possible means less than 50 and remote means 5 to 10% now there are four levels of the degree of probability of an outflow of or inflow of resources if there is 90% chance of something happening we'll be saying it is virtually certain if there is more than 50 and less than 89% of something happening we'll be saying probable probable means more likely than unlikely if there is less than 50% chance of something uh, we'll be saying it possible and if there is uh, 5 to 10% chance of having something it is it is just known as a remote chance now let's discuss liability first if there is more than 90% chance that we need to pay someone then we need to book the liability immediately provide means we need to record the liability that income statement or retained earning will be debited and the provision account that is liability account will be credited if there is more than 50% chance or more than 90 in both the cases liability shall be booked immediately but if there is a less than 50 chance a uh, less than 50% chance of something happening will be just be disclosing it by way of notes to the account we just need to aware our shareholders that this is the liability that we can hit uh, will be affected by in the near future uh, maybe next year and there is a remote chance of happening then will be not disclosing it at, at all there will be no disclosure or no uh, entry recorded anywhere now uh, these are the rules for asset then lastly now discuss the rules for uh, these were the rules for liability now discuss the rules for asset if you are virtually certain that we are about to get some money from someone because we have sued someone or due to some other reason there is more than 90% chance then will be recognized that amount immediately therefore it is not a contingent asset it is a confirmed asset Uh, now what we need to do we need to record it as an asset uh, again receivable account will be debited and income account will be credited so this is the uh, actual asset that is about to materialize then there is a the probable chance more than 50% chance uh, that will be getting an asset so we'll be disclosing it by note this is known as a contingent asset uh if there is a possible chance or there is a remote chance we need to do nothing now if you compare these two there is a slight difference in these two in the remote chance there is no disclosure in both of them but it in the possible chance if the liability is possible obligation we need to disclose it as a contingent liability by way of notes to the account but if the asset is contingent we do not need to disclose it Uh, if there is less than 50% chance see dear this is an application of prudence concept prudence states that uh, if you may foresee a loss that loss shall be booked immediately but if you may foresee an income or asset that income shall not be recorded once it it is virtually certain okay so therefore we are disclosing it by notes uh, if it is a possible obligation but if it is a possible asset we need to do nothing but there is a, if there is a 50 per, more than 50% chance means there is a probable outflow or inflow if there is a outflow we need to record the liability as a provision but if there is more than 50% chance of asset again we are just disclosing it by note so this is exercising of caution exercising of prudent prudence 
that we do not need to overstate our assets and profits. So I hope students you are able to understand the concepts underlying contingent liabilities, contingent assets and provision and if you do did and if you did that kindly share the video with other accounting students. You may also consider subscribing the channel if you are new. Thank you.